corner. Today I have a very old friend of mine who looks exactly like he did back in the day when we were training. We did a movie Sex Death together. Yeah. We've done, oh no, we did uh, Man, uh, from, Man from Atlantis. That's right. That's right. And it's my pleasure, you just saw him pose, Tony Pearson. Thank you, Tony, for being here. Thank you. Thanks it's for inviting been, me. It's been, I've been trying to get you for a couple of years. Yeah, I, yeah, I was in Germany and yeah. you contacted me and I was in Miami. So. Know, but now you're here. I'm here. On a Sunday morning. Sunday morning, right and early. Yeah, you came at 10. <laughs> I knew I was early. Yeah, you were. All right, so we're here now. You know, you've been training ever since I can remember, and we did Man from Atlantis was back, what, in the 70s? 77. Was it 77? Patrick Duffery. That's right. Remember that? Yeah. 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 We had a lot of guys on that show with us. Yeah. Uh, Hudson, what's his name? Jim Morris. Uh, uh, Jim Morris. Brian and Beatty. Brian, yeah. Um, oh, my God, there were so many. I forgot all of them. Who was, who was Spar Minions? Uh, it was Spar Minions. Is that what we were? Yes, yeah. yes. I remember we had this. Eddie Hudson. Was it Eddie Hudson? Ernie Hudson. Ernie Hudson. Who's done a billion, billion things. things. That's right. All kinds of stuff, man. <laughs> Ernie Hudson. He was so funny. Yeah. He said, man, by the time I'm 40 years old, I'm going to have $100 to my name. <laughs> now he's like a millionaire. Yeah. So you started training at, at what age? I was uh, 17. And now with this posing, you're how old? I'm 58. Wow, that's incredible. And um, been doing it for 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle. And I train because I love training. I mean, the competing part came in later, but I just love going to the gym every day. So No, I mean, we're all from the old school of, of going every day. You had told me something that um, what I did years back when I started was training each muscle three times a week. Yes, and prior to a show, I would do that for beginners or yeah. put, put on gain size. I wouldn't do it twice a week. For them, I recommend twice a week. For myself, I have the size. I'm just trying to overlap. Yeah. And when I do that, I keep the pump all week. Your chest feel pumped up the whole week. Right. So the first time like 100%, second time is about 80% of your max. And then the third workout is more like a more like cable stuff. Yeah. Just to keep the blood moving. Right. And like off season I'll train once, one muscle, you know, each time a week. So really? Yeah. Do you notice anything from that? I do. No. I stay cut but I get smaller. Do you get smaller? <laughs> yeah. You know, I thought about that too because in your head you think if you don't train, you don't do if you take a day off, you think you're shrinking on a day off. Right. I took the day off and I feel forty pounds lighter. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. No, it's just like one of those things. You don't go and you feel like, oh my god, I lost my pounds. Right, I'm losing, I'm losing it, but, but you're some, not. No, no, you're not, because sometimes those days off are the days you grow. That's yes. when you grow and you come back stronger and you train heavier the next time and you recover. The muscles right. gotta recover. Now when I moved down here to Venice and uh, uh, prior to that I was training Bill Pearls, but prior to that I was training like each muscle three times a week. Right. Made tremendous progress. Exactly. And that's the way Steve Reeves and all the guys did back in the day. Yes. Uh, I think that I didn't have many days off, I can remember. But when I got down to Venice, the whole thing with Eddie and Arnold, all those guys we were doing everything twice a week. Right. And so I switched it twice a week. I, paid, I worked out with Bill Grant, too. We'd do Monday, Tuesday, mm -hmm. Thursday, Saturday, or something like that. Make okay. good progress. Okay, okay. On those on those four days. Four days, days is yeah. a little extra rest. But this is when you're gaining size. Yeah. Prior to the show, it all changes a little bit. It does. Um, I had a difficulty. I was wrestling at night, too, so I was getting my cardio okay. on the ring. Right. So my diet was like we talked about, mm -hmm. you know, high protein, low carb, mm -hmm. uh, no fats. Mm -hmm. But my didn't we didn't have cardio. Right. Cardio was in the ring. Right. So I was able to stay lean in the waist and all that just by not having the carbohydrates. Right. No low carbs. Yeah. And that's what I do now. Very low carbs. Yeah. So I cut the fats, low carbs, high protein, just to hold on to the size. You have a junk day? I have a junk meal. Okay. And in moderation. I do cheat, but 95% of the time I'm pretty strict. You know, back then the junk day was pizzas and ice cream and pasta <laughs> Still and is. cheesecake. I can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that? No, I can't do okay. that. Back then I could. Okay, yeah. Now it's like a junk meal, like you said. I have, right. I'll, I'll share a dessert. Right. That's the big deal. Right, right. But I don't have the desire anymore. It's just I just yeah. rather eat okay, you know? Yeah, I feel better when I eat clean. Yeah. When I have the junk food, my body tells me this is wrong. Um, what do you think the main problem is today with the younger guys in the gym? You see them training, what, what do you, and you're a trainer. What do you think they're doing wrong mostly when you watch them? Honestly, my personally, uh, tr uh, technique and form. Yes, totally. I am such a critic on that. Yeah. Because if you're not getting 100% out of each rep and every set, you're wasting time. Exactly. So I'm very precise, pinpoint every move. Everything's under control. Mm -hmm. Everything's under control. I'm not using momentum, I'm not throwing weights. So it's really isolation. Yeah. And at my age, you better be isolation to save your joints. Absolutely. And protect yourself. No heavy training anymore? No heavy training. High volume. Yeah. Like how many reps? Uh, I would go squats is like 12 to 20 reps. Okay. Uh, everything else is about a good 
10, 12, 15 reps. Okay, biceps too, because it's a small muscle. Biceps, 10, 12. Okay, mm -hmm. triceps more? About the same, 10, 12. Okay. Shoulders and arms, 10, yeah. All right, since arms are always an issue with people, I would say, oh, you got great arms. Mm -hmm. um, how, let's just say it's arm, it's arm day for you. Mm -hmm. How do you separate the bicep, tricep? How many exercises for each and how many sets for each? Biceps, uh, three exercises, uh, about four or five sets each. Okay. So we're talking about. <laughs> That's right on cue. <laughs> <laughs> it's right on point. It hasn't changed at all. It didn't change. No. And triceps, same thing. About the same thing. Yes, but really under control. And the most important thing I watch people train these days, I don't know where they get this from, is they're going, they, there's two parts to each rep. They're missing yes. half of the rep. Yes. They keep missing half of the rep. I know what you're going to say. And everything about the positive. It's the negative that counts. Right. So everything that I do, I'm focused on negative, always. Yeah. It's not about, if i got to think about the weight, then, then it's too heavy. So I'm focused on my muscles. I'm pinpointing where it's going to go inside bicep if I'm curling. If I'm doing tricep, inside head of the tricep. So there's got to be a point where you focus in on when you're training. Like squats, when I'm not squatting, I'm focused on the upper quad the whole time. I'm not thinking about the weight, just the quad. We are. Well, your mind tells your body what to do, and so your mind right. will direct yourself to the target that you want. Yes. And if you see these these kids, I don't know, let's call them kids, they're all types, all ages in the gym. Right. Their form is so bad. I saw a guy doing triceps with the handle. He's just doing this. Yeah. And this one kid was in the gym. He doesn't talk about it. He's doing curls. And he's stoned like this. Yes. The funny thing is, he was getting a bicep, and I got pissed off. <laughs> Why are you doing that so wrong, and you're still getting a bicep? You know. Well, if you have genetics. Anything yeah. you do is going to work. Yeah. But if you don't have the genetics, you better really focus on some form and technique to yeah. really get that to develop. Yeah. When I started bodybuilding, I had no chest and no triceps. I had to build it. So I wasn't throwing weights to build it. I had to really think about and analyze what can I do to get my chest to grow. It was not from the bench press. It was from no, no, it's not from bench press. It was from heavy dumbbell presses, dumbbell flies, dips. And back in the day, I did pullovers, which I don't do anymore. No more pullovers. But it was those three exercises that built my chest. And then I went back to the bench. Yeah. Now the bench was more of a powerlifting move. It was a power move. And the stronger I got on it, my pecs never got any bigger. But I switched to dumbbells. <laughs> yes. Started getting, getting yes. what I wanted. Yes. Uh, even dumbbell inclines. Yes. You heard of Jimmy Caruso? Yeah, sure. He had a gym in Canada. Uh, he, he, he spent hours with me teaching me how to pose. I'm grateful for that. But in his gym, there was no bench. It was all dumbbells. And all of his guys had these huge chests. Upper chest, lower chest. And it's from dumbbells. He would, they didn't allow bench press in his gym. No, you're right. It, may, it, does, it does make a big difference. Um, sometimes after doing chest, I'll lean against a, a pad like a preacher bar and I'll do maybe 50 push-ups and just hold. Yeah, exactly. Hold right. and, and flex. Center chest, yeah. Exactly. It brings out all the cuts too. Right. You know, somewhat. Yes. Um, dumbbell flies, you think they're as, as good as cable crossovers? They're better. Yeah? Because you can use more weight. And there is that stabilize and control balance thing. Yeah. So they're better. I do a slight little decline, not flat. Mm -hmm. I, I put a 45 pound plate into a slight little decline so you get that lower chest engaging, which we need. And then when you contract to the top, to the middle, you get that upper chest. So right. it's working the whole chest. Slight little decline. Right. Not the full decline. No, I got it. Front delts. The, the thing is, is that when you reach a certain age, my age for sure, uh, even your age, the, the joints start to hurt a little bit. And there's a lot of guys out there who watch this show and say, look, there's certain movements I can't do. Right. They can't do dips. I used to right. be great at dips. I can't, I'm afraid to try them. Same here. I don't. I stopped doing dips and dumbbell pullovers. Yeah, pullover it kills your shoulders. Right. right. So now, even the dumbbell flies, mm -hmm. I can do them, mm -hmm. or dumbbell presses now, and my shoulder sounds like celery. Just, mm -hmm. you, know, you can feel it cracking like mad. So I kind of shy away from it. Okay. And then I was up to like, I mean, I was up to like 150 pound dumbbells Ooh. for reps years ago. <laughs> I quit doing them and started doing machines, right? Yeah, okay. So now I went back to the 45s and 35s the other day, and I haven't done dumbbells in a year. Mm -hmm. They were heavy. They were I heavy. I felt like a fool. But you felt good. Did you feel the pump? I felt it. It's the yes. same thing with curls. I mean, I used to curl like the 50s, 55s, 60s, 65s even, mm -hmm. and now I do the 20s. Right. And I feel like a wimp. That's not, that doesn't matter. No, but it's, it's, it's a, I, I know it's a mind game. Yeah, I don't understand I why that is so heavy now. Uh, and then I see guys at Rich Piano come in, they do the same thing, 20 pounds, 15 pounds. Yeah, you know, over time it comes back. Yeah. So you start with 20, and then you'll be 30, and you'll be 40. Yeah, hopefully. Literally. Yeah, it just, weights is relative. It's not how much you're using, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's what you're doing with it. Yeah. I was doing biceps a couple of months ago, and this kid comes over to me, he was strong, he was curling 65, so he comes over to me and he goes, so, your bicep is good, so what are you maxing out with on the dumbbells? I said, 30s. 
and we start laughing. <laughs> yeah, you don't, need, you, you don't need it if you isolate it. No. The other question is, because I had Doug Brignoli on, we were talking about working body parts, for example. Let's just take a bicep. Mm -hmm. He says the bicep does one thing, it goes up and down. Right. So when people say they're shaping it, or they're doing this to shape it, not really, because it has a shape of its own. Right. In the, in the, right? That's true. I mean, it's going to peak if you're going to peak. If you have a peak, it's going to peak. Yeah. Right. Doing exotic exercises doesn't necessarily make it peak. Right. You can take one exercise for the bicep and work it, but if you focus on it, you're really working it. Exactly. You don't need to switch to another one when you're doing good with this one and say, okay, I'll start fresh with this exercise now because you've already gone where you've gone, right? Exactly. Okay. I totally agree. Totally agree. But we still do three exercises. We do because in our mind, we think we need to do more. I know. Because to get a complete workout, I felt like I didn't do enough. Right. So I'm known for Mr. Overtrain, so I'll keep that oh, title. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I do a little bit too much, and I said, you know, you could go a lot bigger if you would cut back a little bit. But, you know, I love training. <laughs> yeah, you're competing still, or you're just doing exhibitions? Just exhibitions and photo shoots, and I competed last year. Yeah. I won the NABA uh, USA. Oh, Masters. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, why wouldn't you? So. <laughs> so yeah. Why wouldn't you, right? Exactly. And so, uh, and you're training people? Uh, personal training. Where? Uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, oh, you're in Las Vegas. That's yeah. right. I uh, forgot. City Athletic Club. Have you heard of it? City Athletic Club? No, but the, the, there's a lot of City Athletic Clubs it in every is, city. Yeah, it's true, but this one is the, the, the Mecca is where all the pros coming in next week for the Mr. Olympia. Yeah. They're all trained there. And I heard a lot of guys have moved to Vegas. A lot of guys, yes. Cheaper to live. Yeah, uh, Jake Cutler lives there, and uh, who else? Quite a few guys live there. Yeah, I yeah. like it. I like Do it. You? And it's close enough to here too. It's, it's not like when you move there, you're on the strip all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh no, no, I live in, I live on the west side. Yeah. So I never go down to the strip. I don't see anything down there. No need to. No, there's no need. It's like we live here, and we never go to Hollywood. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you guys go to Universal and Hollywood and visit? No, no. No, unless, no, unless we have visitors in town. Exactly. <laughs> so, and then I just let them go. I'll meet you later. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, I never go down to the hotels. Never. So this, they have a Gold's Gym there too. Gold's Gym's not there anymore. No. It's called ESO or something. Hmm. They, you know, all the goals are gone. I didn't know that. Yeah, just recently that happened. But uh, they have Las Vegas the Athletic Club and mine's a city athletic athletic club. Okay. And uh, great gym, bodybuilders gym. We have tons of trainers. Everybody's very fit, so they motivate me. Those young people motivate me. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, I'm the old man. How big is it? Ooh, it was a 24-hour fitness before, so they had the basketball court. That's huge. The box is huge, yeah. They got the box, and they got the CrossFit, they got the swimming, Pilates, yoga, dance. Yeah. You name it. We have over 100 trainers. But we're only interested in one thing. Yeah, body on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> we're yeah. on the floor. It's hard to find a, a gym with a good weight room. I mean, I train at North Hollywood Gold. It's the closest I train thing. there. Yeah, yeah. It's the closest thing yeah. I found to Venice when Venice was in order. You're there. right. Absolutely. Uh, the, the new Venice Gold in, on Hampton, it's big, uh -huh. and you, you can get lost in there, and right. you never really have to wait for equipment. Right. Yeah. And I do see a lot of the people, like Eddie Giuliani, and, and I see Ferrigno, and Seymour Koenig, and those guys, but a lot of the guys aren't there anymore. I, I know, I know. It's kind of sad. It is. I kind of miss that. A lot of them passed away. I mean, it's, it's pathetic. You know, I mean, I ran into Don Howard down at the beach, and uh, mm -hmm. um, he's not the same guy anymore. It's, it's sad. Chuck, I had Chuck Faust. You know Chuck Faust? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we were friends years ago, and I had him on the show, and what a nice guy. He just had so much to say about everything, so knowledgeable. Yeah, okay. What a pleasure. He just right. really pleasure. I can't wait to have him back. Right. But I told him, I remember when we met, and he was training at Vince's, and I was at Gold's. Uh -huh. We came to the Valley one day, we went to this Ralph's when I, him and the guy named Rick Giafu, and I, and they were going down the aisles eating peanut butter out of the jars and ice cream and foods and putting them back and putting them back. He says, hey man, we had no money, we had to eat. <laughs> that was lunch. Yeah, I mean, bodybuilding back in the day, I mean, you, you had to scratch for food. And yeah. even even um, next to, I think it was the gym on Broadway, which was Muscle Beach Gym, they had all you could eat. And you could go next door and eat all the chicken. And then the owner got a little upset. He changed the sign to the best you could eat. Best. Yeah, yeah. No more bodybuilders are allowed. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, they got but kicked those, out. Yeah, yeah, those are the days. We knew all the places. There was a Swedish smoker board up the hill. I used to chicken. go there. You know where I'm right? Yes, we had chicken night. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was there. We're, 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 like, we're kicked king. Exactly. Bodybuilders had their radar out. They knew exactly where to go oh. eat and eat the most. Yes. And a lot of guys take their workout bags and foil and put chicken breasts oh, and stick it down no. the bag and take it home and eat it. Cheating. <laughs> yeah, I went to the pancake house one day and there was this guy named something Flowers, I can't remember. He looked like, I always told him he looked like Diane Keaton. Okay. He had long hair, we're sitting there eating and he's spotting this lady, he keeps looking at this lady and then she got up and left and he went right over there and finished her salad. No, he didn't. He says, that she's not eating it, I got to <laughs> <laughs> Funny stories like that from the past. Oh, I remember those days. I lived on tuna fish and coffee. Yeah. Because how do you get so ripped for the America? 
uh, tuna fish and coffee <laughs> and any money. <laughs> it's funny you said that because sometimes I'll go to the mall over here, I'll get uh, some Subway tuna. Uh -huh. um, I'll get about three or four scoops and I'll have coffee. And I found this is really, really weird. You drink a sip of coffee and then you take the tuna and the tuna tastes okay, but the coffee after the tuna tastes like coffee beans. It smells like it's right. really fresh. Yes. yes. Doesn't it change the taste? It, it changed the taste completely. Yeah. yeah it makes I, the coffee it tastes like it smells. I got used to it. I got thrown out of gym a few times when I first started. I think it was Dan Howard that <laughs> got out of the gym. I hadn't seen him in years. I saw him in 2004 at Joe Gold's Memorial. He's, I think he's in Orange County still. Oh, is he? Okay. I don't know. I mean, he was, he was there and gone. And Arnold's back at Gold's. He is? I haven't seen him yet. Oh. He's always taking pictures of people down there. Oh, okay. He's back. Yeah. Okay. It's good to see him back. Oh, yeah, yeah, He looks yeah. great. He, look, he looks good. Yeah. yeah. He's in good shape. Yeah. He's in good athletic shape. Right. Exactly. Not huge, but he doesn't need to be. Who needs to be anymore, right? I don't want to be huge. No. <laughs> I never want to be huge. No. What's your plans for the future? Um, build my uh, personal training business more and try to write a book. Yeah. I want to put the last 40 years of my little tricks and trades in the book. Are you writing it now? Yes, I'm working on it. By yourself? Or like that? Uh, I got somebody helping me out. So. You need help. I, have, I need help. <laughs> I have, no, no, not that you need help. I have some books out and I have to finish one on my life for the past 10 years. I wrote, when I tore my quads, I wrote a book on my life mm -hmm. until 2001 and then I stopped and now I've got up till 2015 to finish. I think the best way to do that for you and for me it's kind of hard to sit and write every day. Yes. It takes a lot of time. It's yes. a, like Eddie and those guys, they, we dictate, don't have time. they dictate into a machine. Right. Like they used to do a weeder, and then the writer would pick up and write it. I see, okay. It's a big time saver. Right, it's the best time. Best it is. You just give them the information in order and let them type it up and, right. and format it. Right, right. But I think you should. People want to know. Yeah, it's, it's, it was a lot of uh, adversity coming up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've seen a lot, you've been around a lot. You know, yes. And, been a lot of places. Even back then when we were doing TV shows and stuff together, there was always a group of us that hung out and we had a great time. Yes, and I really miss those days. It I was, too. It was fun. Like a team. Like a team. It was a team. You're competing against each other at the gym and on stage, but after we were friends. Yeah. Not like that anymore. No, no, no. It was about, you know, the sport. Yeah. Being the, the art. I call it the arts. I think... Um, when we got man from Atlantis, we were training at the gym on 2nd Street. 2nd and Broadway. Right. Yeah. yeah. I remember now. Yeah. That was a, a little different gym, but it was okay. Oh, that was, that was, that was a mecca for the time. No, they had a, they made a machine for seated pressing like a Smith machine, uh -huh. but they made it. And they took pipe and T-pipes and they put it on <laughs> rods and the, you'd have to WD-40 it and right. then put some weights on just push the pipe up and down. Right. And I thought, I'll try this. And by the way, it worked. It worked. It did. Yeah. The second and Broadway. And then the first gym in, at the beach, Golds. Golds. One shower. Pacific, yeah. For men and women. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I made it the last three months before they closed the door. I arrived in 76. Yeah. And a few months later, the door was shut. I remember the first time I walked into Golds. Yeah. I was like, a kid sitting in the corner watching everybody train. And it was just before the Olympia. Yeah. So these guys were training. Everyone had a training partner, too. Yeah. It was intense. All you hear was weights. And weights and weights. No one's talking. No one's drinking. It's very. It's, it, no music. You could feel the energy. Yeah. And I was sitting in the corner looking at these guys. Oh my God! How do they do it? I want to do this. This is what I want to do. Yeah. I knew from that moment. But um, yeah, the last three months I got to see the real Ghost Gym, the original. If you guys out there could only experience what we did, I mean, it's cool. like it'll never ever be duplicated. No. Uh, it was a time that was just. It's it's in within itself. It's just an amazing time. And the camaraderie and the friends that we had and the things we did together uh, at Zookie's Deli, you know, right. hanging out down <laughs> yeah. there. And down on Venice yeah. Beach, if you went down. What about German's restaurant? The German's restaurant, I got to tell you about that. <laughs> the German's restaurant was down at Venice Beach by the weightlifting pen. Oh, yes. The weightlifting pen was very old and archaic. It just had a few things, but you could work out there. Yeah. There wasn't That's more than idea. about 20 people down there at any given time. Right. You didn't have the vendors and you didn't have the tourists. Right. Just us. And just wait. And a couple of low alcoholics that lived around the beach. Right. And that was it. Well, there was a restaurant across the board, boardwalk called, we called it the Germans. Germans. I don't know if he even had a name. Yeah, I don't have no it, idea. It was a German guy and his sister. Right. And they had what, a seven egg omelet and a toast and jelly and coffee for like a dollar thirty-five. Yes. And the sister was actually pretty. Okay. She was pretty, but she had huge shrubs in her armpits of hair. Oh, because <laughs> like the Germans do, and when right. you serve your food, that hair would run over, you know. And Arnold found it sexy. He liked that. 
<laughs> she was she was okay. okay. I'm not sure he didn't tackle her. She was her. cute. Okay. She was cute. Okay. Her brother looked like a vampire. Oh. He had hair out all over the place. He's flipping eggs. And I don't remember them, them at all. Oh, I remember it. I, remember. I do remember the food. It was good. Yeah, they had a little counter and they had three booths. Right. I went there every day. Yeah, and the omelets were huge. I mean, seven egg omelet with cheese and right. whatever you wanted for a dollar thirty five. Those, those potatoes on the side. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Coffee toast. <laughs> I know, and then they moved from there to Windward, where the arches are. Okay. They moved into the building there. Okay. And I remember Dan Howard was was working at the gym, and he was out for a moment, and Clint Eastwood walked in, <laughs> and someone and Clint says, "When's Dan coming back?" And he said, "I don't know, maybe an hour." He says, "Well, is there anywhere to eat around here?" And someone said, "Yeah, go right down there to the Germans. You'll get some good food." Right. So somebody said, "Why would you send Clint Eastwood to a place <laughs> that has tomain poisoning?" <laughs> you know. But apparently, he liked it. He liked it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. oh, there's so many stories. I thought it was great. Food. It was great. Oh, man. Those gays are gone. We yeah, used to have all those special nights. We got to go eat. Let's go. Exactly. And we didn't have cars, so we had to jump in each other's cars. Exactly. I never had a car. Oh, that was like, yeah, I used to take you to the set. <laughs> yes. I on know. your bike. Yeah, yeah. You're right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. All the way to the valley. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, man. What well, it's mean? nice that you're here. Yes. That, it's been fun. A lot of fun. Now, people can reach you. You guys want to reach Tony? How do they reach you on? on the my my website is Tony Pearson Personal Trainer dot com, okay. and uh, my email address is Tony Pearson eighty seven okay. at hotmail dot com. I'll put that up so they can see it. Okay, good. And it's just been a real pleasure. My pleasure. Now you have to go back to where? Uh, back to Venice. Got a photo shoot. Yeah, you got a photo shoot, <laughs> and tomorrow you're at the contest at down the contest. there, Venice Beach contest. If you guys are in town for Labor Day, come on down. I think it's the last contest of the year. Yes, it's going to be a big one. Yeah, it'll be a big. Be like three thousand, four thousand people there. Yes, who's getting the uh, Hall no, of Fame? Who is? Ed Corning. That's right. I heard it. Pumping Iron. Yep. Good legend. Iron. Legend. I go down. I have to go down. I have to see him. I stole some of his poses. <laughs> he won't care. I copy a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you guys for watching Race Corner. Thank you, Tony, for being here. Thank you. Uh, we'll be back uh, next week with a new show, and stay tuned now for news and weather. See you next time. Awesome. Equalizer, baby. See you next time.